I'm Scott Al Miller. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today, we are in the Reparto San Carlos, and I'm out for a walk, just doing a barrio tour. This is actually a part of the city I've never been in, but I'm really close to places that I've been, and we are in an area that I've been really interested in. So just over here is the barrio of Fatima. We're gonna get to our location and all that as soon as we get back from that bump. Let's start today with a little bit of a map. In fact, we're gonna show you a little bit of how we got here. Coming up on 3rd Street, coming out of downtown Leon, we're really not that far outside of the city. You just come north from the downtown area up 3rd Street, which is a northbound only direction, and Fatima lies just over here. But the wall between San Carlos and Fatima is pretty solid. It's a completely different area. You've got big buildings that completely block and very few roads that go in between them. Now we're in, we're gonna show, we've got the San Carlos sign right here. Hopefully that shows up okay. And we're gonna show if, when you're looking at the map, we've got this spot where the roads split. So hopefully you can see this here. We're gonna be going left because we're actually gonna be walking towards the reparto of William Fonseca. Uh, I believe that is correct. And here we are in San Carlos. So it's a whole group of areas that we have never been before. And uh, so now that we've shown you where we are, you've seen it on a map. I'm just gonna flip the camera around and we're gonna start walking and exploring. And of course, I picked the hottest possible day. It is like one o'clock in the afternoon. There is an unbelievable amount of sun going on. It is crazy warm. And I, of course, was like, you know what? I feel like getting out and doing a walk. I need to do a barrio walk. Haven't done one in a while. I've got these areas I really wanna see and uh, let's just do it. And so, oh, it's gonna be a hot one. I just know it is, but I'm excited to see this area. We're heading out of the city and going into some really interesting spots that I, I actually am not quite sure what we're going to expect out here. So. Let's flip that camera around and uh, let's go for a walk. Okay, here is where the road divides. This big white building there. This is actually a church. And then we've kind of got a school to the left as far as I can tell. And uh, the population is going to drop off pretty quickly. That's looking west right there. And I honestly don't know if this road is still considered third or if we veered off and it's a new road. Now this area is designated a reparto. So we're outside the city center. And you can tell, I think, I think in the video you'll be able to tell, definitely walking, you feel this is just a little bit less of the city. Got a lot of water running out of that house. It is a slightly more suburban area. Houses are bigger. This is probably pretty affordable. If you wanted to live, oh, that's a little bit different. If you wanted to live close to Fatima, but wanted something more affordable, this would be the area. Very close to some really nice stuff. We got a park here. Oh, we got a little side road. Looks like a cute little spot. This is definitely a much lower income area than Fatima. So Fatima, just over on our right here, is one of the wealthiest neighborhoods. I mean, same one as there, this. But this is very much not an affluent area. Got some businesses, got a pulperia. Can't get run over. I feel like the motorcycles come extremely at me out here. And the roads are not very squared off here. Oh, this is a bit nicer. And we got this big wall on the left. No idea what's behind that. I really do not know what to expect. Other than being a reparto and being a little bit outside the city, I got nothing in this area. Absolutely nothing. I know no one who's ever been out here, which is crazy because it's so close to the rest of the city. Like, what makes this an area that people don't go to? I mean, a lack of things to go see, like there's no reason to come out. That's generally what happens a lot of a lot of barrios and repartos we got a tall building back there what is that these a lot of barrios and repartos just have no 
no attractions, no restaurants to pull people out, no special shopping. They're just neighborhoods to live in. And so if it's, if it's not a place that you're going to live in, there's no reason for you to come out to it. That is another church right there. These are clearly churches built into nicer, older houses. Ooh, this is interesting. Can't tell, this is all these angles. And now the road splits. I'm actually not sure where I'm supposed to go. I don't know why I wasn't prepared for this. Going to bring up a map while I'm walking. And, uh, aha. Okay, to the left is just a little tiny loop around into the neighborhood. So we're going to be heading off to the right here. My plan, or my expectation, rather, is that we're going to be going out into the country a little bit. That's what it looks like on the map. It looks like that the two repartos that we're looking at are going to be... Oh, here you can see. That little road to the left just turns and goes down into that neighborhood. You can see all these... Well, pulpery is along here. Everybody sells a little bit something different. Other than being warm, it really is a beautiful day for a walk. I'm recording this on a Sunday afternoon. Houses on the left are set way below the road. Actually, on the right as well. The road's a little bit elevated through here. While we're coming through here, can I just remind everyone that uh, if you got any questions or comments, love hearing from you guys. Scroll down there below the show notes. You got all that space to ask questions, leave comments. And of course, if you go into the show notes, should you be interested, you can make a video of yourself and send it in. And uh, we will get you on the show and be able to uh, hopefully answer your questions. Uh, and, and have everybody get to know you. Like, it's such a cool way for you guys to engage with each other and kind of get to know some of the audience. Now, look at this. I feel like everything just changed all of a sudden. So much more space, big yards, beautiful bushes. Shrubbery. We just went from, I think that was the Reparto ending, and now we're in the kind of countryside between the Repartos. Okay, this is pretty interesting. The music changed. The noise level changed. I'm going to do my best to show what we're walking past right now. Okay, so let's just show this real quickly. So this is a street drain right here. So the water flows from the street, goes down that, and then goes down this really steep gutter. And then this beautiful moss-lined gutter takes that into the river. This is where the tiny river in the north comes through town. Of course, loads of trash, right? No way around it. But that's... That's where it passes under the road. Go see the other side. Got some fun afternoon music playing. I'm going to try to take that out so it doesn't cause a problem. So it's, it is the rainy season, but it did not rain today. It rained last night, though. I'm surprised there isn't a lot of water in here. All right. Got some cumbia music playing. Now, this looks like a bar out in the country, hence the cumbia. Oh, check this out. Oh, this looks like a fun place to come hang out. Nice little Tonya Cumbia bar at the edge of the Repardo. This looks like they're uh, churning a bunch of earth out there. Not quite sure. This became a very, like, I love all the places full of trash. No dumping trash. This is private property. Don't confuse the trash we dumped here with you being able to dump trash here. Don't get confused on that. Check out this little country lane here. What have we found? This could be somewhere in western New York all of a sudden. Which is where I grew up, which is why I mention it. Check out this house, this turquoise house. This does not fit with anything we were walking past. Okay, real quickly, just going to show. We went from city. Th this is kind of what I was expecting out here. To suddenly we're out in the country. And uh, I hope the sun is not causing problems with this lens. Hold on, I'm going to... I was not looking at it. I've got the... If sometimes we lose contrast, I've got a polarizing filter on today because it's so bright. 
I wanted to cut down on some uh, some of the sunlight. See, si, it's bonita. Oh, hold on. I think we're being invited. <laughs> Hola, mucho gusto. Hello, puppy. Sí, me llamo Scott. Mi nombre es Arlen. Arlen. Sí, acá en venta, vaya a la casa. Esto hasta el fondo con un taller construido. Ajá. Adentro tiene. Si usted puede pasar a verla. Sí. Vamos. Sí. Uh, soy un YouTuber. Tengo un canal en YouTube. Es grande. ¿Cuál es su nombre? Uh, it's a uh, Scott Allen Miller vlog. Eh, ¿De dónde? Uh, vivo en Sutiava. No, pero su país. Uh, originalmente ¿Sí? en uh, los Estados Unidos. Ah, ya. Okay. Pero. Ando de visita por acá por Nicaragua. Ando de. Sí, no, sí. No habla español bien. Un poco. <laughs> no bien, un poco. Okay. Es uh, uh, vivo aquí hace tres años. Ah, ya tiene bastante. Ya, 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 no pasa nada. Viene, so, viene sofocado. Ah, sí. <risa> Entonces, esto. Ah, oh, sí. Hasta allá. Ajá. Wow. Esto. Uh -huh. Y se ve pues, en un garaje, un cuarto de lavandería. Ajá. Y adentro, bueno, vamos, le voy a ir. Sí. Hola. Tiene todo lo que son frutales. Tiene fruta. Ah, oh, sí. Sofó. Arlen took us around and showed us the Quinta. This is pretty interesting. So this is a place that her parents have, but it's too much for them. So they're looking to sell it. So she was interested in telling us about it. I really appreciate the tour. This could be a perfect house for some of my viewers who are interested in what a Quinta could be like, what kind of places are available if you're looking for something a little bit less city, a little bit more country, but still pretty close to things. gusto. <laughs> This is a pretty good way of living in a sort of suburban mode. Uh, obviously, suburbs are a little bit different here in Nicaragua. She showed us over on the side, there's space for a barbecue, space for a pool, potentially outside the gate. It's got a bit of lawn. Uh, and of course, there's fruit trees and everything in the back as well. So. Oh, sí. Sí. Es bonita. Sí, tiene una vista preciosa. Wow. Y si siente el calor, mm -hmm. baja mucho. <laughs> es muy fresco por la mañana. Sí. Wow. Qué bueno. Sí. <laughs> sí, hay una terraza también aquí al lado izquierdo. Compromiso, pase adelante. Él es mi papá. <laughs> mi papá es el propietario de todo. Ajá. Uh -huh. This is a really nice tour. Thanks to Arlen for showing us that. And if anyone's interested, I can give you her WhatsApp contact. Mm -hmm. Oh, sí. Eso fue de la reparta. Sí. Wow. Y uh, la treña es todo en sí. la esquina? Sí. Ah, todo ok. Todo lo que está construido por el... 
Okay, that was really cool. We got invited in, got to do a little bit of a tour. What a beautiful place. It is, uh, she was saying, it is too much for her parents. It's just the two of them now. And uh, he was saying that there's a great spot right over here for putting in a swimming pool or a veranda, but a swimming pool, definitely. And this is a great spot. That was a nice, cool house. We're outside the city, so you get a lot of breeze and stuff. I mean, this is a hot day, so no matter what, it's going to be warm. But that was a very fresh place. Is the Quinta Juanita, which I have seen on maps before. And that was just absolutely perfect timing to be walking by. Not sure what prompted her to be like, you got to come in and film the place, but we did. <laughs> Maybe that's becoming a trend. Oh, we have a little path here. Must be a farm. What is that? Are they? Oh, I have to restart my watch, track my workout. And as I had expected, we are out in the country now. Oh, I need to put our, I gotta put our filter back on. Let's hope I didn't get it all messy by throwing it in my pocket. We were inside there and I had to, had to get rid of it quickly. It looks like, looks like it's okay. All right, brace yourself guys. We're gonna put the filter on. You'll actually be able to see things change. There we go. Now we're back to the polarizer. I'm doing my best to keep the sun off the lens. I don't know how well I'm doing. I'm trying. Just a beautiful day for a walk in the country though. Oh, I needed this today. I'm feeling good. Oh, what a beautiful spot over here. Oh, there's a cow in there. We're so close to the city. This is a neat area. I could see people being very interested in this. Obviously this is rural, but this is perfect for rural living and being just minutes outside of Leon proper. You could easily have a, you know, quintas, generally what we would refer to, what most people would be interested in, having a small farm, some fruit trees, a little bit of space to live in what I can only assume is an extremely inexpensive area in general. And uh, but have that option of going out to eat in the city. Just, I mean, you saw how quickly we walked out here. There's no way it would take you more than five minutes to drive into Leon. And this road is, I mean, there's a pothole as I'm saying it, but this is a nice smooth road. This would be no problem at all. This is just really pretty country living out here. I'm gonna try to, I don't know if you guys can see this at all. Really should not walk through tall weeds in the tropics, but that is the city on the other side of the river. So that's how close you are to the city. Those buildings that you can see through that tree, that's how far we are from the barrios. Well, that's the Reparto San San Carlos that we came from, but that's all the farther it is. But because of the river, it kind of cuts this off just a little bit. But this is so pretty and so different than other parts outside of Leon that we have seen. This is definitely unique. I don't know if you guys can tell. Oh, I'm going to show over here. Look, we've got some hilled areas here. There that we must be looking at the football, the, the soccer stadium. I'm sorry, the baseball stadium. That has to be what that is. I can see buildings over there. There's a hilled area there. That's a little bit clear. There's a, see some nice houses. And then we can see that radio tower over there. This is a seriously pretty area with some nice views and some trash that can be cleaned up. And then I can see I doubt you guys can make it out, but I can see uh, San Cristobal out through the hedgerow on the right.
what I was saying maybe before I got distracted with the views was, I don't know if you guys can tell, but the road is going uphill. It's not steep, like it's not a bad walk. We can tell that motorcycle is up above me, uh, three or four feet at least. So we're getting just a tiny bit of elevation as we walk. And that means just a little bit more air up here. This is definitely a find. This is a, I mean, I'm only walking this little bit. This is a really cool area. What is that? Day? These are the kind of country walks that I like so much. Kind of discovering something really cool. This pasture on the left, talk about pretty. There's definitely traffic out here. As much as we're outside of the zone that people know, this is a very attractive area. A very, yeah, I've been saying that. It's a very active area. Obviously it's got a life of its own going on. There are a lot of views of the mountains. Boy, I'd love a spot right here. A little country house, big yard, those views. Wow. This road is so well maintained, it actually has a yellow line down the middle. Like, check that out. You can see how skinny the cows are. These are healthy cows, but they're very skinny. That is why it's because of this heat that they don't make a lot of cream in the milk. When I was picturing walking out in the country, I wasn't picturing it elevated in any way. So I wasn't expecting there to be like views or anything. I think that guy is selling ice cream. That is a long way to push an ice cream cart. This has got to be one of the most interesting open areas we have come upon yet in all of our walks. What, what are they? <laughs> that guy is definitely getting a workout. Check out this beautiful view of the volcanoes. Oh my gosh, this is fantastic. Wow. What an amazing spot. All right, we are back on our walk, making progress once again. We've really not been out for too long. I drove so far away from the city, well, the city center anyway, that uh, I'm actually getting a, a good amount of time for real walking out here. Man, those volcanoes are fantastic from here. Well, we know taxis come out here. That's a good sign. I really want you guys to get in the comments. I want to know what you think about this area, both right now while we're in the uh, countryside part of the walk. But when we get into these repartos, no idea what to expect. So the first one was San Carlos. We saw just a tiny bit of it. There is a hospital there. For some reason, if you need a tiny little clinic, they have one. Uh, I believe it's the hospital. It's the Centro de Salud Benjamin Zeledon, I think. And then uh, San Carlos is right next to, more or less, the new hospital that's just set to open. So it's in a good spot for healthcare. And this area where I'm walking, very close. 
Like, obviously I could walk from here to the new hospital, but if I was injured, I couldn't, right? So that doesn't necessarily matter. But uh, uh, I'm anticipating that William Fonseca, the barrio we're coming up on, or I sure hope we are, uh, the Rapardo that we're coming up on, should be pretty interesting. Given what we're seeing out here, I don't know how this isn't gonna be super interesting. So, and it connects to the city in two different ways. There's this road from the west, or I'm sorry, from the east going west, I'm heading west. And then there's another connector that's smaller from the south. And so this side connects basically from Fatima, way on the east side of the city, the northeast. But then the other side of this reparto has a little tiny road that goes down and sneaks in through Providencia in the west of the city. So it's it's connected to the city of Leon in like these secret back roads that connect into quirky little neighborhoods that people don't know very well. It's all very weird. And then if I have my bearings correct, the old railroad is north of us. So a little bit off to the right and creates a barrier that keeps the reparto below the old railroad. So if you're wondering why the layout is the way that it is, that's probably what it is. Buena tarde. Okay. But get down those comments. I don't know what you guys think about, obviously these walks are cool. Oh, look at that lane. Look at that lane. Fantastic. Oh, and the volcanoes and these fields. Man, I'm loving this walk. I'm going to do this one more than once. Woo! But, so country living in this area, what do you think? Layout of the land, thoughts. If someone says they want to put a business out here, I'm going to tell you right now, not going to make sense. Not going to make sense. But if you want a beautiful place to live and you want to enjoy beautiful field views, beautiful hedgerows, gorgeous volcanoes off in the background, a relatively quiet road. I think you've got, uh, I think you got some potential. And then we're coming into this very unexpected reparto. You can see there's power lines and street lights and stuff in front of us. So I think we are getting a little bit closer. Okay, this is a sign for La Terminal. Laboratorio Clinico. Looks like a medical clinic. What What did we just find? What? What is happening? Look at where we are. I hope you guys are, if you are listening to this and not watching, take a moment. I just stopped for a second so you can <laughs> come in and start looking at the screen. So we're just coming from all these fields and nothing. And suddenly we're at this beautiful modern house. And yes, this is the very first building of the Rapardo. Wow, I mean, it's not big, but gorgeous. What? What is going on? This is so beautiful. <laughs> okay, not what I was expecting. Now on this side, notice this cool little stone wall and uh, beautiful frontage there. Am I to guess that this is a wealthy suburb hidden in the country that no one knows about? It has potential. Well, that house for sure was a great example of what you can do out in areas like this. Wait, are they? So if you're ever wondering what a kind of suburban, slightly country, high-end, small home could look like, that was it. Fan. Fantastic. And then we got very dirt road places here. Place on the right. This this could be something, could be nothing. It's hard to say. And this is a very nice pavered road. So we've got a nice little spot here. Hope that sun's not causing problems with the image. Some pulperias. Okay. That's a parking lot spot for sale. I don't know if there's a house or anything. I don't know what that's connected to, but that's a say vende sign. 
Got another little pulperia beside us. This is definitely not a big place, which would be really surprising if it was a big place hidden back here, but it already has so much more potential than I was imagining. Okay, this is a, uh, in case this isn't obvious, this is a church on the right. Very attractive though. What is that today? A lot of classic buildings, but well maintained. What is that today? It's easy to see, the doggy, easy to see that this area should probably be affordable, that has some real good potential. Why not that, are they? Selling tejadas on the street. There's a little ice cream store. Check that out, nestled between the trees. Cute little spot. And then this, some kind of store here, beautiful house. Really nice balconies. Look how lively this street is on a really hot Sunday afternoon. Oh, we got quite a nice place on the right here. Although on the left, this is a store and notary and law office. And then this is a really nice house right there. Oh, we got a nice house on the left. What are they? Hello. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> All right, check out these houses. Every one of them is nice. This is a super impressive area. And then we got a couple of little stores here on the left. Oh, that is a bar in there. What are they? Yo! What are they? This could be something cute hidden back there. I like the little front yards here, not very common. Hola, buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Oh, look at that cute little walkway going into the house. And a chicken. In some ways, I think regular viewers of the channel are going to recognize a certain stylistic connection to the Reparto of Veracruz, which I show quite often because I live pretty close to that. You can, okay, I don't know if you can see it. If we look down this dirt road, you can see the fields north of the Reparto. So that is the end of the streets right there. That's open countryside. So we're definitely not talking about a physically large space, just a few streets. But for those who don't want to be out in the country, and some of you may have noticed a comment just the other day from Jack Pittman, 
famous YouTuber in Managua, after my house was burgled, he mentioned the potential risks of living out in the country. I don't think they're quite as bad as he's imagining, but they did that he's correct that, oh, we got some buses parked out here. Being out in the country does present some challenges that you are alone. And if you have people home all the time, not a problem. Again, violent crime, not a thing here, but, uh, hola. But, uh, you know, petty crime is, but if you want to have neighbors, people nearby have that sense of safety, maybe have a smaller place, be able to walk to the local bar, be able to walk to the pulperias, be able to have a taxi pick you up really easily, then living in a little reparto like this could be quite fantastic. So if you're comparing this, I'm gonna check the sunlight on that lens. If you're, it's a little bit, it's a little bit getting internal reflections. I'm sorry about that. If you're comparing this to Veracruz, it's got a lot of similarities. The biggest difference is how lively it is. Veracruz tends to be very, very quiet. Okay, pretty sure we got another bar here. I don't see a name, but there's a lot of people and a big space. That is definitely a bar of some sort with no name. And oh, how cute is this little spot? Hola. Maestro. tarde. <laughs> see, see, estoy garbando. Right as I came up to those guys, the camera overheated and it shut itself down. But I stopped and talked to them for a few minutes. They wanted to know about what I was doing, introduced themselves, told me a little bit about the reparto. So we had a nice little time there. And then when I was done talking to them, I went on a few more blocks, about two blocks, and we're at the edge of town. So that was it. That's the entire extent of the reparto. So it's not super big. I didn't want to wait a really long time for the camera to cool down in the middle of the village and then walk to the edge. So I went ahead and walked to uh, the, the western edge of the town and there's a big field there. I stepped into the field and uh, took the camera apart, let it all cool down and just hung out for about 20 minutes and gave myself a little bit of a break and uh, switched out batteries because a cold battery in my pocket and let the other one uh, be in my pocket hot. It's a technique at cooling down the camera faster. While I was out there, I discovered this road in the middle of nowhere uh, in the middle of this field that's like a path through the field, but it is apparently the road. This is the weirdest thing. So that was an interesting discovery, worked out perfectly. I don't think I would have found that had the camera not overheated at exactly that moment, and it led to a pretty cool adventure, so we'll continue from there. Okay, we came through the Reparto and just about a block before the edge of town, uh, it, the camera overheated. So we're just a block to the west of where I was, and I'm out in this gorgeous field, and I've discovered this amazing path that a lot of people keep coming down on motorcycles and on foot, and I feel like if we didn't take it, we'd be missing out on a big opportunity, and I'd feel bad later. So, I think you know what we're gonna do. Okay, I saw several people on motorcycles, several people on bicycles, a couple people walking, and no sooner than I start down the path than we have someone on a horse. It doesn't get much more perfect than this on a Sunday afternoon in Nicaragua. What did I say? Are they? There is so much traffic on this little field road. It's absolutely crazy. Adio. Adio. I'm definitely a novelty 
this far out. Look at that, bicycling into the volcanoes. That is just... Wish I had bike rides like that when I was a kid. Adios. Okay, so this entire community has no name that I know of. Of course, it has one, but I don't know what it is. This is an entire community that does not exist on the map at all. Google Maps does not recognize the road or the community or any of this. And this is a full-scale cemetery on the left. Like, this is not a new or tiny community. What have we found? This is, this is a large cemetery that goes back quite a long ways. Nobody has any idea this is here. Adio. Not one thing here is on any map. There's a pulperia. This is wild. We are, we are so far. I guess we went far enough. Oh, I guess the cemetery is on the map. I'm going to show the cemetery. The crossroad shows up, but that there's anything here is completely hidden. This is a seriously, seriously large cemetery. Got a puppy. Hello, puppy. You can see this is, there's cross streets in this community. It's not just a wide spot on the road. We're still going by the cemetery. This is extremely large. Oh, we have a sign. Maybe it's going to tell us where we are. Okay, this is the road. That is the road going into Leon. That is the far western road. Here we go, here we go. And a trail has a sign, but it doesn't list the community anywhere. Well, that's useless. Got a dog up there going through the trash. More houses down here. I don't wanna to hike too far, I'm way off my path. I have to go all the way back to get to my car in San, Car San Carlos, but this is so interesting. All right, so that will go into uh, somewhere between Providencia and La Salle. I'll have to check a map to see where that connects, but you can hear some lizards there. We're still by the cemetery. It is so big. I can tell a storm is coming. I'm going to be caught in a storm on this walk. I can tell. And now I can't keep the camera running absolutely everywhere we go because it's so hot out today that the camera is overheating pretty quickly and I want to be able to show you guys some real stuff. So I'm going to uh, clip in and out and give it chances to cool down. And I'm also swapping batteries in and out so they have a chance to cool down outside the camera. It's a, it's a tough one, but this is a fantastically gorgeous walk. Glad we did this. This is a this is a neat find for sure, and a great view of what so much of Nicaragua is like, these little communities connected by unmarked roads. But there's so much activity. That's the, that's the amazing thing, right? Like, if this was New York where I grew up, some of the stuff, not the cemetery, would be very familiar. Buenas tardes. But... But the amount of activity is nothing like New York. The little country roads, crossing through fields, all that, that's, that's familiar. But to actually have people out there, when I would walk areas like this back in New York, I could go all day, be the only one, never see a soul. Not in the fields, not working, 
Not in the houses you pass, definitely not in the cemetery. Give you guys a little unobscured view. Hopefully you can see how big this is. All right, let's get back to that field road. And uh, head back to the Reparto William Fonseca. Looking forward to this walk with these gorgeous views of the volcanoes in front of me. We're gonna enjoy this. Start of this. Pushing the ice cream. Uh oh, that is a storm for sure over Leon. Some of the volcanoes are starting to disappear. I'm a long way from home. Uh, uh, okay, we're heading back now. <laughs> that is that's rain you can see coming down to the south. So if it's down there, I'm really lucky that it's not up here already. What is that? Is That's some dark rain over there. Dark, dark. You might be able to see every now and then, right in front of us, there's a tiny bit of a building you can see. That is the baseball stadium in the north of Leon. This view of the volcanoes though, wow. And there's a nice breeze out here. We're outside the city, slightly high ground, maybe, 10, 20 meters above the city center. Definitely not much, but enough. City's not blocking the wind in any way. It's nice and fresh up here. Adio. If you're wondering why I say adio, it's like aloha. We say it for hello and goodbye. The reason that they say it, I'm told, is because by the time they're saying hello, they're already past you. And so it's literally like a goodbye, but in a hello kind of way. But it's the same as they use aloha in Hawaii. But what's funny, uh, earlier when all those kids walked by and they said, bye, bye, bye. It's because they've been told that goodbye means adio in Espanol. But it doesn't in this case. It, they should have said hello if they're saying it in English but because they're doing a direct translation from Nicaraguan Spanish, they are saying goodbye. So you will hear a lot of people who don't speak English very often, but are studying it, try to tell you adio, meaning hello, in, in English, and they translate it as bye. So that is why you'll hear that from time to time. It sounds awkward in English, but they're it's a, it's a standard greeting and uh, you get used to it. But if you, in most of the Spanish speaking world, you do not say adio or adios for hello. You only say it for goodbye, but here it's very specifically for both adio. And it's all the same word. We just don't say the S's on the ends of things here because I don't know why. Sometimes I wish I could bring you guys along with me. This is such a beautiful, beautiful walk and it, it really makes me happy to be able to set up the camera and have you guys tag along virtually even if it's a bit later but there is something just magical about a solitary walk in the country kind of getting isolated and away from it all it's just so beautiful out here it's such a wonderful day and it was really hot but it's cooling down pretty quickly but uh it, it really is meaningful to me. It really is important to be able to bring you guys along for these journeys. And, and days like this are just so perfect. It's so beautiful and solitary. And it's just such a great spot to be able to sit and marvel at how gorgeous it is out here and see the storm rolling in, trying to ignore the fact that I'm about to be caught in it and uh, just, just be at one with yourself out in nature and in the countryside. 
this is fantastic. So I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch and join me on these journeys. It's, uh, it's really very special. All right, I've reached the end of the field again. I'm about to re-enter the Rapardo. So this is the field, the Rapardo is through these trees. I'm gonna step through the trees. I'm gonna switch the microphone so that we can do that. And then I'm gonna head this way, uh, which is south, just a little bit, um, and go through the Rapardo on a different street so you can see more of the non-Main Street. I wish we could show every bit of Main Street, but I, I can't do that much walking. Storm is getting close though, so we gotta get going. We got some, a lot of people on this path. It is very popular. So let's head in there and show you a little bit. I'm really enjoying this walk, glad you guys could come along. When it's are they? All right, here we go. This is the Reparto. Now when my battery died, I was right up there at that intersection, right there. And uh, so we're gonna go this way, which is more the middle of the Reparto, but it's not the main street. So we're gonna see what we can find here. I've never been here, so I have no idea what we're gonna find. There's clearly a square, so I'm gonna walk into this and see what this is. It looks like a memorial, obviously. Looks like our paved road is right there. Just this last street for some reason isn't paved. Got a nice house there. This is a beautiful reparto. Even this tiny little thing, well-maintained, very tiny, but well-maintained. Okay, here we are, William Fonseca Martinez. Got a little beautiful memorial there. I'm gonna guess that like a bus or something uses this as a turnaround. That is probably its purpose. This was probably meant to be flowers. That is the Sandinista Memorial. Oh, they're smart, they have an umbrella. I don't have an umbrella. There's where, we, that's the street we came down. That's about where my camera died, about one block before there. So you can kind of see where we were. Coming onto a nicely paved road. We're in good shape. Still so many people out. So there's a road going down to the south there. And we're heading east. And the uh, shop here. Adio. Hola. It is so active. I cannot believe how active it is out here. Hello, Bobby. Cute little cottage there. Adio. If you're looking for cottage, for country cottage living, you could do pretty well out here pretty easily. Hola, buena tarde. I think I can only imagine being out here as a foreigner, you would be the one and only. I would not expect to find others. Oh, cute place, cute place. Nice front. Here's where they sell the cooking fuel. What is that? They? <laughs> Looks like a shop on the right. Oh, check this out on the left. That is a nice house with a big parking spot on the side. Lots of space around. Just giving you some ideas of what can be done out here. Here's a little place that sells pinatas and party supplies. And has cute doggies. Got a nice house on the right. Uh, before the green one, but the green one as well. So even here off Main Street, we got a nice neighborhood going on. What it are they? You can see this goes down to the south quite a few blocks. It's not a tiny spot. If it's something you're interested in, I guarantee you would be able to find a spot either in the Reparto or directly adjacent to it.
It's a lot of small shops. There's a print shop on the right. Oh, we got a, okay, we got some bus parking. Oh, small but nice house here. Several nice little spots here. This is a seriously well-maintained, tiny reparto. Dog pooping, can't help that. Check it out though, look at how many people are out on the base, uh, soccer, no? Kickball, is this kickball? No way, they're playing kickball. This is amazing. That's like my sport. I'm old, I bet I could pull this off even now. I'm just kidding, I couldn't really, but it was my sport when I was young. Okay, this is super cool. Adio. All right, check it out. It is a community kickball match. This is the best. And there's a lot of people out too. It's not like just a couple of people playing. That's like people showed up for the match. All right, I'm crossing diagonally across this field so I can check some stuff out. Oh, there's something really nice beyond it. I don't know what it is, but I see really well-maintained houses and yards and stuff over there, like fancy suburban stuff. Got some kids playing baseball. So much community activity here. This is amazing. This is like Minnesota, 1960. We found a house for sale for those of you who are interested. Quite small, but if you're looking for a tiny affordable place, you've got one right here, right on the park. Oh my gosh, there's a cover, okay. I'm just, uh, I was not expecting to be walking around the Reparto this much, but now, now I have to. This is how I get lost, just so you all know. I think I'm heading south at this point. Okay, this big covering here. That is... <laughs> See? <laughs> this is the basketball court. Check it out, and people are using it. This is a giant covered basketball court. Way nicer than we get in the United States. Like, way, way, way nicer. You can play out here in big storms and people actively use it. So cool. Those are all over the country. It's a standard basketball court setup that they have. They're really, really nice. Look at this doggy. Hello, doggy. Hello. Where are you from? Uh, originally uh, New York. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, we're here at the, okay, say the name of the school again. Yeah. El Colegio San... San Ignacio de Loyola. There we go. We are here. This is where the basketball court is. This is a high school here in William Fonseca and uh, came in and hung out for a little while. The rain is coming, so I'm going to be taking off because I have several miles to walk yet back, but we've been hanging out. So thanks, everybody. Thank you. Adios. Bye -bye. <laughs> Look at these beautiful grounds of this high school. My gosh, a fountain in the middle. This is really nice. Okay, we definitely have a storm over top of us. It is nice and cool out here now. So that part is excellent. However, I am walking into rain. So, gotta figure this out. <laughs> what an awesome community they have out here. Beautiful community, beautiful school. Lots of really fresh air. This is a beautiful breeze coming in. Now we're on kind of a back street, which is perfect for the school. <laughs> Adio, amigo. Pienso que hay lluvia pronto.
Oh, gonna get run over. <laughs> Some cute doggies here. All right. So this is the house that was for sale, but I don't want to go out of my way too much. So we're going to head up to the road we had been on before I got distracted <laughs> and came down to see this, this kickball game. So cool. This is a great walk. We've been invited into different places on this walk. That's more than normal. All right, we got another back street we're coming past here. Let's take a look. Very quiet. Oh, there's a double. You can see someone with a balcony down there though. And people everywhere. Every single street has a bunch of people. Okay, so this is worth noting. If we're gonna do more exploring here, I could easily pull in here and park and be out of the way. That is a Ruta. So that's one way to get around out here. Oh, oh, I don't know if this is part of the school. I don't know what we found, but check this out. Probably part of the school. That is my guess. This is a gorgeous community. So while I was there with the, I believe that is the person who runs the school. He's from Spain. And uh, look at this beautiful house in the corner. This is a great little, even on this street, I'm pretty sure this is the one we started on. So I'm gonna continue down here. Lots of nice houses. And then this is the public school on the left. This is what they look like, the white and blue. I show these every so often. So we've got public high school and private high school here in this community. Lots of trees to give them shade in there. It's actually quite nice. Look how nice this road is. Nice pavers lying down the middle, nice and quiet. So we were talking and one of the things we were talking about is when it comes to not just being awesome for you guys, meaning you guys who are potentially interested in moving to Nicaragua and thinking about where you want to live. So many people, when they're coming to Nicaragua or anywhere, right? You see the big cities on shows and stuff because that's where people vacation. That's where they stop by and they're one week zipping through and everybody shows the same places. And everyone who's foreign pretty much considers the exact same set of places because they have no other information. They don't know how to look for anything else. They don't know what things would look like. Look how beautiful this is. This is house. Orochena. Oh, this is beautiful. I wonder if this is the entrance to what we saw from the other side. Hopefully I'm not disturbing anybody. But these paths, this garden, wow. That is gorgeous. So everyone ends up grouped together as foreigners creating unofficial enclaves because, well, what else are you gonna do? You don't know what to look for. You have no idea what's out there. You have no idea how to do research. And when you get people who've moved to, let's just say Leon, right? You move in and you do the natural thing. Okay. So this really is so much of this looks like the Reparto Veracruz where I live. Like this really is similar in good ways. Same colors, same styles. Why is that? And uh, I love all the, the shrubbery, well-maintained, beautiful neighborhoods. And... So you have these enclaves where people just kind of group together. What are you going to do? When you have people like me who've lived in Leon for a number of years, then we start to, over time, get to know different communities, different locations, and start to say, you know what? There's this place I saw one time. I really liked it. And then you, maybe you pay attention and maybe you move there eventually. And you end up in some place that just calls to you. Okay, so there's the edge of town there. I don't know if you can see, but there's a fence. So I'm going to head up to the main street here. And so we naturally disperse slightly over a long period of time, right? But uh, it takes a really long time and only those typically who stay really long term 
and those that are adventurous, and those that have the resources to move and be away from things, and those that like, say, country living or village living or whatever, ever venture out from the city centers. And some of them go to barrios, some of them go to villages, some of them go into the country. But it's a very small percentage, and it happens after generally quite a bit of time. Okay, yes, I know where we are. And uh, because of shows like mine, of which there are not many, so basically because of my show, there's an opportunity for my audience, for you guys, to have a really good understanding of what options exist. So you can say, ooh, I like village life, ooh, I like Rapardo life, ooh, I like country living, right? And you're able to figure out how to do it. You're able to figure out what some real world options would be, not just, ooh, I like the idea of a village, but I can't find one. No, you're able to, you know, earmark a few different repartos, a few different villages, and go say, oh, I'm interested in this one and this one. I like their looks, I like their locations, I like the amenities they potentially offer. And uh, you have a totally different potential experience. And the value to a place like Nicaragua is that when you have a whole bunch of foreigners grouped together in a single spot, what tends to happen is they tend to shop differently. They tend to do things together. Sometimes they run their own businesses to support each other. We're back to that amazing house. And this place with the gorgeous garden with views of the volcano. This isn't so fancy, but it's really nice. But this place, small but amazing. But when you spread them out, right we're kind of naturally forced to become parts of our communities so instead of grouping together and all going to the same restaurant or same couple of restaurants you go to your local place instead of all shopping at the same grocery store you shop at all the little markets all over the place instead of you know doing just activities all together suddenly you become parts of your communities just naturally now of course you're almost always going to seek out some other foreigners and hang out from time to time, obviously, for lots of reasons, shared experiences and all kinds of stuff. But, you know what, we're getting darker out here. I'm gonna take just a break. We're gonna get rid of this polarizing filter. We don't need it anymore. Let's see what it really looks like. I can hear distant thunder. That's a bad sign. Uh, <laughs> but, oh, I can see some houses way back there on the far side of this field. Such a gorgeous walk today, this is fantastic. Oh, I forgot to restart my watch. How many miles did I do without the watch running? Ah! We're back at this beautiful little country lane. So cute. Oh, there's people walking down it. Way down there. Oh, and branches fell as I go by. You can tell the rain is in the city because people have their lights on when they're coming from the city. Great, I'm walking into the storm. It is, I guess it is after four o'clock in the afternoon, so the sun is getting low, but far from down. Quite a number of taxis coming through out here. Well, I'm really hoping that this walk for you guys was a good one. This was certainly good for me. A lot of new places, some new ideas, talk to some people. This is a successful walk for sure. I don't know how far I've gone. I don't know how to tell from my stats on my watch while I'm walking. How do I get to tell me anything? I don't know. There we go. I've only done two and a half miles with the watch running. So I've done at least three and a half.
It's not a crazy walk. It was hot earlier, now it is perfect. Such a beautiful weather. When it gets quiet out here, it gets really quiet. It's almost always a car. That's another taxi. You'd probably want a car if you're gonna live this far out, but clearly you can make do with taxis if that's what you wanna do. Back where we came from. There's a number of people walking. I can hear music coming from that bar we passed. So I'm walking by this old country bar. Hey, yo. There's more pigs back there. All right, we are back in San Carlos. Some cute little cottage living out here as well. Definitely potential in this neighborhood. This is the same road we were on earlier, just other direction with a whole lot less sun. <laughs> and now we have Skipped a bit, gotten back here, getting close to where the car is. I'm just surprised by how much traffic comes and goes from this Reparto, really lively. Hello, cat. That, that is a very small cat with a very serious face. All right, we're back to this little pulperia. And this is where the split was that goes off into that neighborhood. All right, guys, we are nearly back to the car. This spot with the little stairs going down. What's there now is nothing but you could do something with that. That'd be really cool. It's definitely an interesting area here near the river. Probably a lot of a lot of water drainage issues, I'd imagine. So thanks for joining me, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this barrio walk. As always, get down there in those comments. Let me know what you think. Ask your questions. Send in some videos. Like, subscribe, tell someone about the show, and as always, I will see all of you tomorrow.